us. I wasn't expecting this. Pass. Spot on. Let's move on to the next question. What is the significance of this visualization? Tell me practically anything about it and we'll be okay. Basically, it's, be, it's plotted on different axes. Next. Actually, it is something like the number of dimensions are increased. You can basically have uh, better analytics. So Next. Uh, there is one uh, dimension of speed and volume. Next. Uh, it's the same data point. Go on. Same data points, you're mm -hmm. just positioning, uh, you know. Partial differentiation. Okay. No. Uh, no, it's a scatter plot. Uh, I have to tell what it depicts. Um, maybe continuous and discrete values discrete depicting. Value. depicting differentiation of each of the curve. And the second one is a differentiation of the first one. Uh, this is, uh, well, yeah, now that you get points, but please feel free to go ahead and guess. Yeah, yeah, go. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry. Uh, just the x-axis you are changing. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, you are arranging, uh, you know, it's just the putting the points how, uh, with respect to different Order uh, of x axis. No, it's not. Anyone in the audience? K means clustering? No. Uh, see, uh, these are a set of data points known as the ANSCOM quartet. You can just do a search on Wikipedia. Uh, they have this interesting property that <coughs> if you take the average of the x axis and the average of the y axis, they have exactly the same average. They have exactly the same standard deviation. And yet, when you plot them, they are completely different data sets. Yeah. Discovered by a person called Anscom to demonstrate how if you aggregate stuff and use pure numeric representations, you will not get to the richness of uh, the actual visualization. Uh, so that was on the Anscom quote. Let's move on to the next question. I've shown you this map. This is a map that colors each of the parliamentary constituencies based on the winning parties, the 2004 general elections. What is the technical name for this kind of a map? Time up, next. Uh, distribution map? Time up. Uh, I don't know the answer, but uh, like, um, as you explained in the seminar, it was like, um, uh, it takes into consideration the volume of the uh, area covered. It doesn't actually. And in any case, I'm looking for the name of this representation. Yeah. Okay. What do you call it when you color a map? Mm. Territory map. Sorry? Territory map? No. Poly maps? Geographical mapping. Heat map? Probability distribution on a map? No. Okay. Sorry. Uh, he, uh, yeah, no, so no, not a heat map. Uh, the term for this is a choropleth, C H O R O E L E T H, where you color effectively. A heat map overlaid on a geographic map is called a choropleth. Okay. Your turn, right? No, don't worry. The questions do get easier in the second round. A little bit, a little bit, just a little bit. Um, <coughs> this is, again, a representation that I showed you this morning. And uh, here's where we use the size to be representative of a degree of proportion or any other parameter, not the actual value. What is this representation called? Graph map. Sorry? Graph map. Nope. Not a graph map. 
Bubble Graph. Bubble. Not a Bubble Graph. Post layout. Heat map. Nope. Not a heat map. A scatter plot. Nope. Not a scatter plot. Bubble map. Nope. It's interesting that I kind of mentioned it this morning. Does anyone happen to know? These are called cartograms. Okay. This specifically is called a Dorling cartogram, named after the author and its inventor. Uh, and we have the last question of this round. So this visualization, dated 1857, depicts the causes of mortality during the war between England and France. Who created this visualization? James Pye. Sorry, looks like I've misjudged uh, <laughs> the level. Uh, but anyway, the answer to this is Florence Nightingale, who is, among others, the author of uh, the Rose Diagram and several other uh, data visualizations of her time. Uh, she, she expanded on uh, the original pie chart, which was created by another famous data visualizer, whose name I am going to ask you towards the end. So just you know, <clears throat> keep at it. Okay? Uh, let's go to the second round, which starts with you. Um, this visualization shows the top 50 Indian batsmen. I showed you this this morning, where the size of the box is proportional to the number of runs that they had scored. What is the name of this visualization? Remap. Yep, remap. Spot on. This rather sophisticated visualization, which I hope you've seen, um, shows the scales of money, starting from dollars, where you can buy apples or sandwiches, to thousands of dollars, which buys you a second-hand car, to millions, to billions, to trillions of dollars. Um, this appeared in a very famous web comic. Who authored this visualization? Hearts. Anand from Graminer. Might be this time Mike Bostock. Okay, Mike Bostock is a favorite. No, uh, I'll give you a hint. Um, this appears in a comic called XKCD. Okay. Uh, fine. So the <laughs> author is uh, Randall Munro, who writes the web comic XKCD, and at the moment he probably holds the mantle for person that creates the most sophisticated infographics in the world, you know, including the New York Times. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay. Considerable research goes into the choice of colors that are suitable for maps you know, that are applicable to a wide range of audiences. For example, what kinds of colors can you use for colorblind people? What kinds of colors work when you take black and white printouts? What kinds of colors work when you take photocopies, etc.? This website, which is named after its author, presents a tool that lets you choose color palettes based on the nature of the data and is also the most frequently cited color palette choice site across the world right now, um, with the number two being Adobe Schooler. What is this website? Or who is the author? It's the same answer. Sorry? Instagram? Instagram, no. So this is website is the name of a person yes. who invented this? The name of the website is the name of the person. Okay. At least the last name. Color wheel? No. Sorry? Color wheel? Color wheel? wheel. Uh, 
Um, so the person who created it is Cynthia Brewer of uh, UMD, and, uh, and the site is colorbrewer.org, or to be precise, colorbrewer2.org in its newer version. Uh, yes, it is out there. I, I did mention that the second round is going to be easier. <laughs> um, so. <clears throat> so uh, this picture shows Hans Rosling presenting the history of the world's uh, development on a TED talk, right? He created a software that was purchased by Google. What is the name of the software? Okay, next. Google Trends? Nope, next. Gapminder? Yep, spot on. The answer is Gapminder. <laughs> Gapminder.org is also the website and the name of the software. The, uh, it's, the word Gapminder is based on the London Tubes phrase, mind the gap between the platform and the station, sorry, between the platform and the train. Um, <laughs> let's go to the next question. A uh, relatively straightforward one. This visualization shows a famous research data set, the iris petals data set, which, among other things, comes bundled with R, um, with every data point shown along four dimensions. What is this specific visualization pattern called? What is this chart type called? Linear data model. Sorry? Linear data model. No. It's a frequency. Uh, looking for some reaction. No. no? Instagram. Spider? No. The spider graph is a radial version of it. Not too fast. Okay, it's yeah, the parallel coordinates plot. Uh, let's take another one. <coughs> this appeared in the New York Times uh, on the cover page um, and it shows the average amount that consumers spend on various products. For example, on this, you would see that people spend more on cheese than they do on laptops. It's structured as a circular space packing layout similar to the tree map. What is this called? Circular model. Is it a Meko? Nope, not a Meko. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I should give you the answer, don't I? Um, it's called um, a Voronoi tree map, uh, or a Voronoi diagram. The person who created, created it, Voronoi. Um, has created the algorithm for perhaps one of the most sophisticated space packing layouts where you can take any arbitrary shape and fill it with arbitrary polygons where the size of the polygons is based on the value, any arbitrary value. Uh, over to the last question, which is uh, <coughs> the pretty much the f uh, father of data visualizations is the author of this particular visual. The data visualizations came into prominence in the 1800s mainly due to the work of this Scottish engineer and political economist. He published the Commercial and Political Atlas since the 1786. Um, he is credited with inventing the line chart, the bar chart, and the pie chart. Who are we talking about here? It has got a name on it. Sorry? 
Do I have Nathan? an angel? <laughs> okay. I was hoping that that would get hidden. Uh, apologies. I will scrap that uh, question. The name was to have been hidden. Uh, that did come through. Um, no, sorry. I will scrap that question. But let me uh, change to another one, which I had as a backup. Uh, you've seen this visualization before. This visualization, uh, sorry, not this one. Uh, this visualization shows every person uh, that was infected in a cholera outbreak in the 1850s in London and was used to demonstrate, as Nitesh mentioned this morning, that cholera is in fact waterborne, not airborne. Who created this visualization? Or phrased another way, who found out that cholera is waterborne, not airborne? Who created this visualization? Okay, that's time. Um, is it not John? John Dash? It's John Nash, I guess. John Nash. John Slow. Between this one and Florence Nightingale's visualizations, it sort of led to the resurgence of data visualization. So between Playfair, Florence Nightingale, and John Snow, 1800s was pretty much all of them from a data visualization perspective. 1900s started with the person that created this particular visualization, uh, the stem plot. He also created the candlesticks that we normally use for uh, uh, stock plots and so on. Just a general question thrown over to the audience. Any idea who created the candlestick charts that you use in charts, that you use in stock plots, or this particular stem plot? Any guesses? Maybe we can just total it up. I'm not going to ask. It's complicated. No guesses. Okay. Uh, this is by John Tukey, and uh, he's one of the leading statisticians of the 20th century. Credited with uh, pretty much next to uh, William Playfair, the largest number of modern data visualizations, at least oh, pretty much the bulk of the data visualizations in the 20, 20th century came from him. Uh, who created the tree map? Do you know that? OK. A guy called Ben Schneiderman. No, skip it. Anyway, I guess I'll leave it to the uh, organizers to announce the winners. Uh, well, thanks a lot. Uh, right, so I would like to thank each and every participant that actually made it here because, uh, you know, uh, without your support, it wouldn't have been possible. Of course, uh, while Unicom as a company offers a learning platform to everyone, but then uh, in turn, we also, you know, intend that each and every organization, each and every delegate benefits in terms of the solutions that any organization intends to offer to the delegates and uh, a cloud series coming up that would commence uh, from the 15th of Feb and concludes on the 21st. So we have, uh, you know, the uh, cloud challenge as well that would come up. So each and every emerging, uh, you know, technology category has has got a lot of these, uh, you know, contests. So we basically want each and every one to benefit uh, from an overall perspective. Uh, so now comes the felicitation round. So that would include, uh, you know, the people. In fact, the contestants that have uh, taken up the test this morning who would be felicitated. Post which we would be announcing the winners. Uh, of you know today's uh, contest that we have had right now, and of course the Janta Janardhan who would be given with their goodies of uh, you know Cadbury's and chocolates. So so yeah. So Sneha, uh, maybe have the certificates uh, so that we can make an announcement. Here uh, between two teams, that is uh, Kolkata and uh, Delhi. So as a result. Uh, yeah. So as a result, we're going to create a tiebreaker question. Uh, so that we have, you know, one winner out of the two uh, for the second runner-up. Yeah. The participants that took up uh, the test this morning, these are the, these are the semi-finalists, uh, and this will be followed with the felicitation of the winners uh, for today. Uh, I'd like to call upon uh, uh, Mr. Nirav Kumar Chadda. Yeah. Can we have a round of applause?
पूर्णिमा सुधाकर जीएस अरित्र मंडल लास्ट बट नॉट लीस्ट वी हैव मिस्टर संदीप भगत So the scores are quite evident, uh, you know, right before everyone. Uh, of course, uh, the tiebreaker question is, you know, almost prepared uh, by sir. So if uh, if we can, you know, have that open, or would you require another five minutes? I have no idea. To ask who created, okay, it's a series of who created questions, and whoever uh, <laughs> answers first, it's it's a you know a buzzer round kind of thing. Just shout out the answer first. Wherever I hear the answer from first, I give it to them. Okay. Um, whose names? Uh, who? No. Uh, name any one person whose name is on the seminal paper on map produced by Google. I'm not getting the answer yet. Who? Sorry. No, sir. Give No, no. Not no. Sorry. Let. Ah uh, no, it's only those teams that are answering. So, okay, um, Jeff Dean and Sanjay Gemawat. Uh, let's take something else. Uh, since you've had a lot of questions on R, and this is not something that I I know offhand, but let's ask who created R. <laughs> 